Cheers. So, it's that time once again for the obligatory review segment. It just has to be done, okay? And I know I already rated and said my thoughts about Tombi 1, but with its next-gen ports released and ones for Tombi 2 set for release in 2025, I reckon that it could use another look, especially seeing that a half-bitten thumbs up is a bit of an abstract rating. It's an intermission anyway, so you can visit the toilet or something. If you want to further fortify your love for Tombi, you can stay, obviously. And if you're new here and somehow came up just for this review, hello! It's nice having you here. Okay, let's get over with it. I'll try to review both of them at the same time. By the way of comparison. Done. It feels really sad to be able to hold the whole work of a studio in two hands. But alas, it is what it is. Released on Christmas 1997 in Japan, Tombi, well, Tomba as it was the Japanese version, got quite favorable reviews by the critics. Its main problem being that it was hard to sell the game, as its gameplay is quite tough to describe to anyone. Basically, Tombi is a 2.5D adventure game where the player collects items to use them in the world, talks with NPCs and platforms their way around various obstacles. The game is built around small quests, both primary and secondary, called events, making it feel like an RPG light that feeling being additionally enforced by gaining experience through defeating enemies and everything rewarding you with adventure points. So, it's a platformer in a relatively big interconnected world that forces you to backtrack a lot, with a lot of text everywhere and a quest-based structure. And all of that is presented to you with colorful visuals resembling 90s cartoons and whimsical tunes playing in the background. Don't forget about it being really Japanese. It created the problem of the target audience, or rather, the lack thereof. Teenagers and the more adult gamers were taking it as too kiddie and found the game too easy, while young kids got burned by the amount of text, lack of voice acting, and how obscure the game could be, leading to the frustration because of the inability to progress. Tombi 2, released two years later, pretty much kept the same gameplay formula, sticking to the event-based progression and platforming exploration. And while there wasn't much change in how the game is played, the AV front was revolutionized. 2D characters placed in a pop-up book-like areas split into background and foreground were replaced by 3D models in 3D environments, moving on two planes with an occasional ability to go deeper. The second big thing being... Hi, I haven't seen you around here before. Voice acting. Sure, it has its weirder moments and the amount of voice actors can be counted on two hands, literally which causes a lot of overlap thanks to the game's large number of characters, 
but it's surprisingly decent, especially for the time of release. It makes the game more accessible to kids, especially with the amount of text and dialogue boxes increased. Seriously, in original Tombi there were a lot of NPCs to talk to, but the sequel cranks it up even more. And it isn't meaningless, as in both games talking to NPCs provides the player with a lot of information about what to do next and hints at the secrets of each game's world. Story moments are now a lot more animated, with some truly memorable sequences. Though I have to admit it, while the first part is quite linear and there's always only one way to push the progression further, it masks it a lot better than the sequel, though it might have been a consequence of there being more story events. But let's face it, the plot is a tertiary thing in both games. Tommy has to get back something, a golden bracelet during the first adventure, and his friend Tabby in the second one, while also getting involved in catching evil pigs and dispelling their curses. The lore and world of both games can be quite fascinating though. Ok, but how do both games play? They are fun and engaging, feeling really fresh as, even to this day, there wasn't anything like the Tombi series. I really think that calling them Metroidvanias wouldn't do them justice. Each game consists of a few lands connected with each other, with their own secrets and denizens. Most of them are affected by the magic of evil pigs, the bosses of these games. 7 in the first, 5 in the second, plus final boss. Changing the levels in meaningful ways, some more than the others. Controls are decent, nothing more, nothing less. While Tombi controls well, especially while dashing or using grapple, there is a certain feeling of floatiness while jumping. Speaking of that, jumping on enemies and throwing them is the main method of dealing with them, and it's really satisfying. Especially if you manage to hit another enemy with your throw, which the game rewards you accordingly. Sadly, because 3D was more taxing for the poor PS1, the enemy density was much lower than in the predecessor. Overall, the enemies tend to be such a non-issue in Tombi 2, which is really sad once you see how much equipment you get in that game. To be honest, the sequel is much easier in general, with there being a lot fewer tricky jumps and the players getting access to a suit that trivializes any platforming challenge. The game progression is also more straightforward, with much fewer head scratchers that were quite prevalent in Tombi 1. Seriously, you could get stuck for tens of minutes just because you forgot to check one little location where a chest with a thing you need is. Not to mention that there are events in the original game that can render the game uncompletable. There are only two of them, but still. Tombi 2 may feel like a bit streamlined, much easier experience, which can be both positive and negative. What the sequel has over its predecessor is a much bigger variety when it comes to events. Seriously, Tombi 2 plays a lot with the things that the game's mechanics and formula allow to do. There's also a lot more pointless interactions that are there just for the fun of it. Then again, it's just a natural progression. There are many shoutouts and things carried over from the original game, which makes everything more consistent. Then again, the original crushes its successor when it comes to the presentation. The slightly washed out colors, beautiful and gracefully animated sprites, the varied environments, and then there's the soundtrack by Harumi Fujita.
Seriously, it's food for one's soul. You don't need to play the game, but you need to listen to its soundtrack. Tombi can be called a timeless game. It's still as good now as it was back then, and it doesn't look or sound any worse. Well, not counting the dinky 240p resolution, of course. The biggest compliment I can say is that if it somehow was never released back then in 1997 and was released now as an indie game, it would gather a lot of attention, probably a lot more than it did back then. When it comes to Tombi 2, it's still a really great game, and I still believe that it's more fun to play than Tombi 1, with better gameplay and an overall feel of progression. And while I like the graphics with brighter colors, more energetic music and serviceable voice acting, it looks and feels like a PS1 game. Which is understandable, because it is a PS1 game after all. Both games are extremely charming, with a lot of humor and zaniness, and are, in my opinion, one of the most undeservedly unsuccessful games in the history of media. They got quite good reviews in the press, yet never sold much. The problems with actually publishing the games both domestically and internationally probably had to do with it as well as the limited funds of Whoopi Camp. They are quite short. My playthroughs tend to take between 5 and 8 hours to finish every event and gather most of the treasures. And in my opinion it was perfectly fine for a PS1 game. Hell, when I was younger I tended to start a new playthrough right after finishing the game. My sister, when she was really young, actually tended to play Tombi 2 just till the Kujara Ranch and then started the game anew, because she liked the initial two lands so much. Not to mention that during your first playthrough there was a high chance that you would miss something, increasing the replay value. Both leave you with a hunger for more, though. So. What about my final score for the games? It was tough, not going to lie to you. As pathetic as it may sound, it took me hours of thinking, mostly during my walks and commuting, but there were some silent times on the chair. Obviously both get the highest recommendations, but when it comes to traditional scoring, Initially, when starting Regret, I was keen on giving Tombi a very respectable 8, leaving a near goal like 9 for Tombi 2. It was a bit of a stretch. Sure, the reviews are subjective by their nature, but that's. Uh, that's a complete overkill. Even if Tombi 2 is in the top 20 of my favorite games and plays genuinely well. Is it a game that I could recommend to everyone? Yes. I can even see my dad enjoying it back in the day. But in the end, I came to the realization that while the game is great, it isn't of that caliber. So then I started picking on Tombi 1's imperfections like the fact that there is so much cut content, even stooping so low as using seven friends as a serious blemish on the game, ending with eight minus and even seven plus, leaving Tombi too with eight plus. But then I've started to have issues with pluses and minuses. Eh, you see why I hate this scoring system? So, final verdict. Both games get 8. Both are great. Both deserve to be played by anyone and have a high chance to be enjoyed. But personally, 
I give a seal of recommendation to part 2. Even if looking at the fans postings on the forums and their comments, I'm probably in the minority. And you might say that I'm biased, but I would like to remind you that it was the first part that I'm so emotionally attached to. And guess what? If you actually respect your hard-earned money, or aren't a complete loser who can spend large amounts of cash frivolously on pieces of plastic, you can now legally obtain a digital copy of the original for PC, Switch, PS4 and 5. Again, you could do that back in a day for PS3, PSP and PS Vita. For a fraction of money. Yeah, I'm not exactly happy with how the special edition has turned out. Don't get me wrong, it's really cool that it's available for every current platform, that Tokuro Fujiwara and Harumi Fujita were involved in it again, and that they've added some materials that weren't available to the public before, but... Uh, the remaster is really lazy and flawed in my opinion. I mean, I expected nothing and... It's exactly what I've got. It's just a fancy way to emulate the classic game on newer systems while generating some problems that weren't present in the original game. Mostly when it comes to the audio, but I had a feeling of controls being even more floaty than in the original. It's an okay emulation job, but... It's a bit pathetic that software made by passionate fanatics runs the game perfectly, while a company that commercially sells their products does a half-assed job. Yeah, I'll never leave it down, LRG, not after Metal Slug Anthology for PS4. Honestly, everyone would be much better if Tombi was released on PlayStation the same way as other PS1 classics, but then other platforms would be left with nothing, so... Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Oh, and the remastered soundtrack that I was so hyped about. It has some pretty okay remixes, but... Eh, it doesn't come near the original or fun works. The price? It's eh. It's relatively fair, until you remember that the original was a 5 dollars or 5 euro on PSN, and that was pretty much spot on emulation. And yet, I fueled the thing I dislike so much by pre ordering the physical $70 special edition for PS5 and double dipping by getting the Switch version just to check it out earlier. And I'll probably get the physical for Tom B2, because I'm a dumb idiot. My only hope is that Tokuro Fujiwara gets enough from each game sold. I'm not encouraging piracy or anything, but wait for a deep price cut if you want to officially play a mediocre version of Tombi instead of the real deal. I don't have alcohol problem. My hobby is too expensive for that, believe me.